What's up guys, it's Dave Marshall with the RCR Marshall YouTube channel and welcome to the Spectrum AR637T programming series. In this installment we're going to be covering how to install the AR637T in your airplane and all of the different ways that you can set up the orientation of the receiver. Before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification icon so you never miss a new video from the channel. Now let's get started. Alright guys, so we're going to be installing the AR637T receiver that I've got here, as well as the Avian uh, 60 amp ESC into my E-Flight Commander. Uh, we're going to be upgrading the Commander to a 4S power system. Uh, so the uh, Avian 60 amp ESC and the AR637T will allow me to get all of the uh, smart telemetry from the uh, 3200 milliamp hour uh, 4S smart packs that I've got. So we're going to go and lift the canopy and start doing a little bit of surgery here. So we'll go ahead and install our new or the motor wires into the new ESC and uh, on the new one they're not color coded so but like I said it doesn't really matter with uh, the brushless motors like this if you end up with the motor going in reverse it's uh, easy enough just to swap any of these two wires any of the three wires going to the motor just swap any two of those and it'll reverse the direction of the motor without uh, causing any problems so we'll go ahead and get that installed into the airplane Now that we've got the ESC and the motor kind of situated in the airframe, I'm going to go ahead and bolt the motor back down to the firewall. Uh, so we've got the motor mounted on the firewall again, and I want to see kind of how the battery fits with the new uh, with the new ESC and we may just leave it um, you know kind of right where it's sitting uh, where it's just tucked off on the left side of the airplane uh, and like I said the the stock ESC was very similar it was just kind of tucked out of the way of the battery and just kind of free floating inside the airplane and uh, and I don't really mind if that's the case here. So here we've got the uh, the smart uh, 3200 milliamp 4S 50C packs that we're going to be using in the uh, in the commander uh, with the smart setup. We'll go ahead and do a test vent of the battery. Um, See how that is going to fit in there. And it looks like it's going to be fine, you know, with the ESC just kind of uh, free floating. Yep. So that's that's about where I want the battery to sit. And the ESC is going to be fine right there, so we're just going to leave it uh, in that position. And, uh, you know, we shouldn't have any problem, you know, getting that connected to the battery and, uh, and everything being good to go. Um, you know, if it ends up being an issue where it's sitting, I may shift it over to the other side, but I don't think it's going to be. I think it'll be fine where it is. <clears throat> and the next thing we need to do is remove the AR636 that comes stock with the uh, with the Commander MPD. So I'll go ahead and get this battery out of here. And get this stuff out of the way. Now with the AR636, um, 
I'll go ahead and get the antennas. Uh, they are taped down. So I'll go ahead and remove that old tape. That way the antennas are freed up. And, you know, you just kind of have to pry it out of there. We were able to get that out of there. And we'll go ahead and pull the rest of the cables out of the AR636 so we can get our AR637 installed. What I'm doing here is I'm just removing the whole tray that the AR636 receiver was sitting in uh, and we're just going to glue that tray back down but that'll allow me to clean up all of that um, that old adhesive that they were using to hold in the AR636 so we can uh, get some new adhesive in there for the AR637. So I've removed the uh, the receiver mounting plate and I'm going to go ahead and glue the receiver mounting plate back into the uh, the stock location and get it ready to mount the new AR637T to the mounting plate. I usually let it cure for about 24 hours and then it's able to be worked and it's uh, it works fantastic. So whenever we get that cured up, we will get back to it. When you're installing the AR637T in your model, you want to make sure that the orientation of the receiver is one that it actually supports. Now in the uh, in the spectrum videos they tell you that it can support any of 24 different orientations and basically what that means is that we can orient this receiver uh, almost any way we want. It is certainly one of the more versatile uh, gyro enabled receivers or even standalone gyros that I have had the uh, you know the opportunity to work with. Um, so when we're talking about orientation, they're talking about basically the position of the pins and how the, um, the, the, uh, the receiver is oriented in the model, right? So uh, here you see the pin package, uh, which we'll just call that the top, you know, it's, it's where the pins are. So in relation to the pins, so if we have the pins forward, um, we can have this positioned in any orientation. So we can have it forward with the label up, label to the right, label down, label to the left, right? So that is four different uh, methods of orientation. If we have the pins to the back, we can also have it in any of those other four positions inside the model. Now, where they derive 24 different orientations, what they're basically saying is that we can have the AR637T oriented with the pins to the back of the model, the pins to the front of the model in any position, the pins to the right, the pins to the left, the pins facing down, or the pins facing up in any of those four positions. So that's six different orientations with four different, um, you know, ways that the label can face. So we can have the pins forward, pins back, pins to the right, pins to the left, pins up, pins down, in any of uh, four uh, different positions in any of those orientations, which give us a total of 24 different combinations. All right, so at this point we've got the um, the mounting plate for the receiver is reinstalled. So I removed that so I could get all of the you know the uh, the old adhesive from the AR636 that was installed in the commander. I removed the plate, cleaned it off, and glued the uh, the mounting plate back down uh, using foam cure. It is stuck in there very good now. I mean, I could actually hold the model, you know, from that plate if I wanted to. It's, it's stuck very good. The, this foam cure uh, adhesive works fantastic. So try it out if you haven't.
Now, one of the things that I mentioned in the unboxing video of the AR637 is that the uh, the dimensions now this this is an older AR636 the dimensions of the AR637 pins and the width and height uh, right so it's a little bit longer you know so that's the the two pin size so here's the pins of the AR636 here and the pins of the AR637 it's a little bit longer than the AR636 as you can see here but if we look at it from this angle the AR636 which is on top is the same width and the same height and the pins are in the same locations as the AR637 now what that means is that for models that had an AR636 or have an AR636 if we want to replace the AR636 with an AR637, uh, it will fit right into the mounting locations uh, provided you have enough length uh, for the AR637 to fit. Now here in the commander we can see that it fits right into the plastic cradle uh, for the AR636. We can put that right there and it fits perfect. Um, and we're going to go ahead and grab some double-sided tape and get the AR637T mounted. Uh, first we'll connect all of our servo connections and get the AR637T mounted and, um, and get everything bound up and ready to go. So first let's grab that servo tape. All right, now, as some of you that have seen some of my uh, previous videos where I've mounted, you know, transmitters, I, or I'm sorry, where I've mounted receivers, you'll know that I use the, uh, the Gorilla double-sided uh, tape it's a little bit thicker than, you know, um, just regular double sticky tape. It's about the same width as like your standard uh, foam style servo tape. So we'll just peel some of that off and apply it to the bottom of the AR637. And we'll go ahead and, uh, and get started with the mounting. So now we've got the Gorilla Tape uh, mounted onto the mounting plate where we're going to place our receiver so now we'll go ahead and get all of our servo wires connected so we'll start with our throttle which is coming from the smart ESC and uh, the way that this is oriented um, you will want your signal wires towards the top. Now on the smart ESCs that signal wire is gray. So we've got black, orange, and gray. Our black is our ground, the orange is our positive, and the gray is our signal wire. All right, and that'll go into channel one. Next we want our ailerons, which will go into channel two. So again, we want our signal wire on top. We, for channel 3, we want our elevator. <coughs> Which is right here. For channel 4, we want the rudder. Which is here. And channel 5 would typically be our gear. We do not have gear on the commander, so lastly we would be plugging in our flaps, uh, which is here, and that will go into channel 6. Alright, so now we have all of our servo connections installed. So we'll remove the top portion of the, uh, the top film off of the double-sided tape and go ahead and mount the AR637 in the model. Now that we've got the uh, the receiver installed in the uh, now that's on the same plate that the AR636 was mounted in we've got it installed and I'm just giving it a little bit of pressure to get that uh, that Gorilla tape to really stick to it and uh, you know once the 
adhesive on the Gorilla Tape sets up. That should be in there uh, pretty good and we shouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, we've got our control rods for our elevator and our rudder and I don't want the um, so if I just left this in there without doing some dressing it could possibly get hung up on one of these control rods so we're going to uh, you know take the uh, throttle cable and just give it a little turn there plug it back in to channel one on the receiver and then we'll dress that up with a couple of uh, couple of zip ties and the last thing that we're going to do as part of the installation is route our antenna wires now you know, I know that there are some folks out there that think uh, when we're dealing with these coaxial antennas uh, like we have here, that uh, you have to have the antenna, um, you know, mounted 90 degrees uh, when we're talking about diversity antennas. So we want one, you know, going one way and the other one to be 90 degrees from it like we see here. Now, the reality is that the only part of the antenna that's doing any work is the bare end. Uh, everything else is insulated. So it's just that portion that sticks out of the end of the antenna that we're really worried about. So we're going to make sure that those are mounted 90 degrees opposed from each other. So we've got our first antenna mounted and now we're going to route the second one we're going to go underneath the uh, the signal wire there and down and just behind the two servos we're going to make our 90 degree bend where this wire or this uh, antenna will be going across the model and the other one is in line with the model so we've got our two antennas 90 degrees opposed from each other so that completes the installation of both the smart ESC which we so you see the 60 amp smart ESC that we've installed here that replaces the 45 amp factory ESC that came in the eFlight Commander and we've also installed our AR637T in the factory uh, location where the AR636 was mounted in the eFlight Commander and routed both of our antennas alright so as you guys saw there are 24 different ways to install the Spectrum AR637T receiver, which makes it by far one of the most versatile uh, gyro-enabled receivers on the market today, which is pretty exciting. It lets us do basically whatever we want. You can install that thing any way you want. It's pretty awesome. Um, in our next video, we're going to be discussing how to set up your DX series or IX series transmitter to take advantage of the forward programming on the AR637T. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification icon so you don't miss another video, and we will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.